Previously on Aaron Turner's Game Reviews. Ah, this is nice. I finally got my review of Mario Kart Super Circuit out of the way, so I can just sit back and relax. Not so fast. Who are you? The name's Mitchell Donner, and I've been a longtime fan of your game reviews for a while now, but it appears lately you've been making a few mistakes. I'm gonna put an end to this madness. Do you realize how ridiculous this is? You're kidnapping me because you don't like my opinions on video games. You're insane. All right, time to web you up. Whoa, wait, hold on. I got a better idea. Oh, come on, this is bullshit. I'd rather be in jail. <sighs> Look, I've lost my powers. Well, I mean, that's okay. That's happened before, right? It's not really about that. That guy who I stopped from breaking into your house, he got away because I tried to use my powers and couldn't. I'm afraid. Who knows what he could be doing right now? Huh? Why is Knuckles calling you? He offered to get in contact with the news for me about maybe doing a segment on my reviews to promote them. That's probably him with the good news. Knuckles, what the hell did you do to make the cops come? You told them about Mitchell? It was an accident. Look, Aaron, I'm sorry, but me, Sonic, and Tails are getting the fuck out of Dodge. Oh, we have just received word that the police have found no evidence of Mitchell Donner being in the house. Oh, dear God! Look, Aaron, it's not right what you did to Mitchell. I'm actually kind of glad he escaped now. At least he's still alive. Spider-Man, you forget. You were the one that helped me put him in the cage. You're guilty of this, too. I thought you were supposed to be a hero. Alright, it's been long enough. Spider-Man has probably cooled down by now. I should give him a call. Look, Aaron, I'm sorry, but I can't join you anymore. I've been thinking a lot lately, and I don't like what I'm thinking about. You and Mitchell are both criminals, and I helped both of you. You were right. I'm supposed to be the hero, but look what I've done. I need to take some time to reevaluate myself. Huh? What's this? Oh, shit. I totally forgot about this version of Ultimate Spider-Man. Well, you know, this isn't going to turn into a triple review. I think I'll save this game for next time. Oh, hey, Aaron. Just wondering if you've heard anything about Mitchell. I don't really care myself, but Tails wanted me to ask. Oh, uh, no, not really. I know as much as you do, I guess. I mean, who knows what that guy could be doing right now. <laughs> Man, Double Dash is so much better than Super Circuit. What a terrible game that was. Mitchell, it's time to go to bed. Stop playing that game, it'll rot your brain. Okay, Dad, I'll go to bed. Man, I wish there was a way for me to let other people know how much better Double Dash is compared to Super Circuit. Wait, there is a way. I can make a game review and upload it to YouTube. And that is why I personally believe that Double Dash is better than Super Circuit. Be sure to look out for more game reviews from me, Mitchell Rocks 99 Okay, that should be good enough. I hope people like it. I would love to make more game reviews. Mitchell? Yes, Dad? Why are you uploading yourself on YouTube? I just wanted to review a game. I don't want you making YouTube videos. It's dangerous, and I already told you I don't want you playing those games anymore. It's not good for you. Okay, I'm sorry, Dad. Alrighty, I think I'm ready. It's time to set the ultimate plan in motion. So in my last game review, I talked about the PlayStation 2 and GBA versions of Ultimate Spider-Man, my favorite game from my childhood. However, I forgot that there's actually a DS version. Yippee. So, let me tell you another story. One day, when I was 13, I was reflecting on Ultimate Spider-Man until I realized there was a DS version of the game. I thought to myself, fuck yeah, if the other versions were great, then surely the DS version would be fucking amazing. So I decided to order it on Amazon. When it came in, I was very excited to play it naturally. I booted up the game on my 3DS and started playing it. And it was fucking horrible. So horrible that I didn't play it again until almost a year ago. <sighs> Let's just get right into it. Ultimate Spider-Man is one of the worst games I've ever played in my whole entire life. No, I'm not kidding. There's very few things about the game I like. So what makes the DS version so bad? 
Well, it's mainly due to one word, controls. You see, this isn't a bad game due to multiple factors like some of the other bad games I've reviewed. This is simply a bad game due to the way the controls were designed. Among other things, but that's the big one. This game is heavily reliant on touch controls. Now don't get me wrong, I understand that's one of the main gimmicks of the DS, but the way Ultimate Spider-Man does it makes it extremely annoying, especially with the Venom levels. Spider-Man's levels aren't as bad as Venom's levels, but one of the problems with Spider-Man's levels is that his special abilities don't really work all that well. I can't even tell if I'm doing them half the time. You have to wait until this meter fills up and then use the R button to use them. But again, it doesn't even seem like anything happens when you press any buttons. Am I just doing it wrong? You also have to use the touchscreen to stroke up with your stylus to lift heavy objects as Spider-Man and to disarm bombs when you have to tap the green when it pops up. I prefer just mashing buttons like the console version. Venom's gameplay is fucking horrible. His gameplay is heavily reliant on the touchscreen. Now, you can use the buttons to attack and eat people, but there's an exclusive move you can only do with the touchscreen. You can guide your tentacle to grab objects to throw at enemies. Now, this might sound cool, but guess what? In order to do it, you have to move your hand from the buttons to the touchscreen, which means you can't jump while attacking. This means if you have an obstacle in front of you, you have to stop where you are, pick up the obstacle, throw it at an enemy, and then move on. The only way you can jump around while carrying an object is if you do this. Does this look comfortable? Ultimate Spider-Man doesn't use the touchscreen in a way that makes the gameplay enjoyable. The touchscreen on the DS shouldn't be used as a way to completely replace the buttons, but rather as a way that adds to the gameplay. A good example is Super Mario 64 DS. In that game, the touchscreen was an optional way to move your character. But guess what? You were still able to jump around and attack enemies at the same time. Wow, being able to move and jump at the same time? What an incredible concept that is! So now that I've talked about the terrible controls, let's go over the levels. Unlike the GBA version, you actually do have a fight with Venom in the rain. There's nothing much to say, it's just a 2D version of the console fight. The next level is your introduction to Spider-Man's gameplay, and then you have Venom's first level. I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. Venom's levels are terrible, and I think it should be pretty obvious as to why. The next level has you saving people from the Rhino before fighting him. I really don't like the Rhino boss fight. It's kind of hard to hit him because you have to avoid his charging and hit his back. It's not that you have to stick to his back like the console version, you just jump up and kick him in the back. By the way, get ready for that to be a constant occurrence in this game. The next level is terrible as well, mainly due to the fact that all you do is save civilians by using the touchscreen gameplay. Did I mention how much I hate the touchscreen gameplay? Because I do. The Shocker boss fight is terrible as well. You have to fight Shocker while making sure this bus doesn't fall from the bridge. Are you starting to notice a pattern with Spider-Man's levels? The next level is a Venom level. This was the level where I decided that I really couldn't stand Venom's gameplay. It's heavily reliant on using Venom's tentacles, especially when it comes to these helicopters. You have a boss fight with Silver Sable, which I suppose is not the worst thing ever, but it's not great. You then have a chase against Beetle where you again have to save a bunch of people. Now yes, you did do this during the Beetle chase in the console version, but in the console version you weren't saving people in every mission, and you also weren't using fucking touch controls. The fight with Beetle can be pretty frustrating because he hovers in the air and you have to jump up to hit him. The Green Goblin fight can also be pretty hard, a lot of his attacks are pretty difficult to avoid. The next level is a big one where you switch between Spider-Man and Venom. Gee, I have to play as both of the characters I don't like? Great. This level is a prime example of why this game doesn't work. You have awful combat as Venom, and all you do as Spider-Man is save people with touch controls. I'm really sorry that I keep on repeating myself, but unfortunately this is what this game is. The same repetitive and terrible gameplay. The next level as Venom was a level that honestly almost made me quit the game. That is how frustrating it was. It's a really long level where you have to bypass a bunch of security systems. Then you have to fight Electro while protecting Spider-Man like the console version. Except it's worse because you have to jump up and hit Electro and make sure your health doesn't drain by absorbing people all while trying to avoid his electric attacks. As a result, this boss goes on for fucking ever. Then we have, oh terrific, another Venom level. You have to go through the sewers and open a bunch of gates. Venom's boss fight with Beetle is not nearly as bad as Electro, but it still requires you to jump up and hit him a bunch of times. Oh, thank god, not only is the next level not a Venom level, but it's a boss fight on the ground. 
You fight Silver Sable, and then Venom shows up like the console version. This was certainly a breath of fresh air after suffering through the previous boss fights. However, the next boss fight may not be in the air, but it's certainly challenging. Venom has a boss fight with Carnage, and the fight itself isn't really that hard. However, it's the part after the fight that I just didn't understand. You have to absorb Carnage, which doesn't sound too hard, right? Well, tough shit, because after trying several times and watching several videos on YouTube, I still wasn't able to do it. No, I'm serious. Some of you might think I'm just being stupid, but I swear to you, that's not the case. I tried time and time again and still wasn't able to absorb him. I have no explanation for this shit. At this point, I began to get really upset with the game. It was bad enough when the game was just repetitive, had terrible boss fights, and was too reliant on touch controls, but now it's not even letting me absorb carnage? Fuck this game. I didn't even continue playing after this. At that point, I could care less if I finished the game. I think you've seen enough of this bullshit anyway. Ultimate Spider-Man for the DS is a fucking terrible game and is one of the worst I've ever played. The DS version makes the GBA version look like a goddamn masterpiece. Another thing about this game I don't like is how fucking slow it is compared to the GBA version. Spider-Man and Venom both move so slowly in this game. I mean, Jesus, look at this. Hurry up, you web dickhead. I don't have all day. I struggle to find anything I like. All you do as Spider-Man is save people by using touch controls. Some of you might be thinking, well, you're playing as Spider-Man. He's a hero who saves people. Yes, he is a hero who saves people. But guess what? All of the other Spider-Man games that I've talked about have been able to show that without having you do it constantly for every level using the same exact touch controls over and over again. So yeah, Spider-Man's gameplay is terrible, Venom's gameplay is especially bad when it comes to the touch controls, the gameplay in general is repetitive, and the boss fights are atrocious. I would rather play Sonic 1 and 2 for the Game Gear, or Sonic Chaos or Triple Trouble, or even the Sonic Drift games before I ever touch this game again. Heh, <laughs> see what I did there? I'm gonna give Ultimate Spider-Man for the DS a well-deserved 2 out of 10. So I would obviously not recommend the DS version, and I'm sure this isn't a shock to anyone. Most people would probably play the home console version anyway, so I don't know why you would want to play the DS version. Apparently this idiot wanted to play it. I should mention that there was another Spider-Man game based on the Ultimate Spider-Man comics called Spider-Man Battle for New York. It's actually a prequel to the original game. However, I don't plan on getting it anytime soon because it's exclusive to the Game Boy Advance and DS, and just based on the horrible experience I had playing this game, why the fuck would I want to play Battle for New York when it's pretty similar to how the first game played? So yeah, I don't plan on reviewing that game, but I just thought I'd mention it. What the hell? Ah oh, shit, the power must have went out. I guess I'll go down the basement to see if I can do anything. Come on. Ah, there we go. I did it. Well, congratulations. Oh my god, Mitchell, you did this? Yes, I did. It was a ruse to get you to come down here. All right, Mitchell, that's it. I've had enough of this nonsense. You and me right now. Let's go. Oh, I'd love to see that. All right, let's go. <laughs> This program for news regarding famous superhero icon Spider-Man, who was captured in this amateur video sitting on somebody's lawn. Oh man, Spider-Man's just sitting there. Oh, check it out, he's picking his nose. I wonder what happened to him. According to rumors, Spider-Man has been doing this for days on end, prompting the internet to light up with conspiracy theories. I wonder what Jameson will have to say about this. Ugh. Ugh. Hey, what are you doing? I'm calling the police. After all, you're still wanted. Hi, this is Aaron Turner. I have Mitchell Donner captured here, ready for you guys to pick up. Oh wow, there's a reward for the capture too? That's great to hear. You can't be serious. Alright, you just sit tight, the police are on their way, and then this whole kidnapping thing will be behind both of us.